My name is Nisha Zenoff, and my son died in 1980 in a hiking accident in Yosemite, my son Victor. And at that time, I was already a grief counselor and a psychotherapist, but none of the knowledge, the professional knowledge that I had, helped me with my own devastation and pain and grief after Victor died. And so I went to the experts, and the experts were you, other bereaved parents, grandparents, and siblings. And I asked the one question that was on my mind and that I hear from other bereaved people is how do you live after a child dies? And I um, interviewed many, many people over the years, and I have a book, The Unspeakable Loss, How Do You Live After a Child Dies? And it starts with a story from my early childhood. When I was 10 years old, I saw a huge portrait over the fireplace when I went to visit my aunt. And I asked my mother, who is that good looking man over the fireplace? And my mother said, shh, don't mention it. I'll tell you later when we leave. And when we left my aunt's house, she said, that's Aunt Lena's son, Walter. He died in 1943. But we don't mention his name. Aunt Lena never mentions his name. But she goes in her room and stays there for hours sometimes. We think she's grieving and in such pain she can't talk about Walter. So when my son Victor died many years later, in 1980, I called Walter, who had been named after his uncle Walter, and, his, and I asked him, Walter, what was that like for you that your grandmother couldn't mention your name for years, never talked to her grandson by name because of the death of her son? Aunt Lena was in such pain. But now we have so much more support. We don't have to go to our rooms in isolation and not talk about the death of our children, grandchildren, and siblings. We can reach for help. And so I wrote my book, The Unspeakable Loss, How Do You Live After a Child Dies? Because it's been a life mission for me to find the answers about that question.